Hey everybody! Welcome to the iPhone 10 Gestures Tips and Tricks video. In this video, I'm going to show you the most useful new gestures to control the iPhone 10, as well as some tips and tricks I've come across or figured out since upgrading myself. First, let's start with unlocking the iPhone 10 to use it. With the new Face ID, this process has changed greatly due to the elimination of the Home button with Touch ID. Now you can just lift your phone or tap the screen and look at the camera or notch area at the top of the screen to unlock it. When that happens, you'll see the little padlock icon at the top of the screen unlock so you know it was successful. If it's not successful, it will just stay locked. It was weird at first, but after a day you get so used to it that Touch ID seems so annoying to use afterward. It's a great change. Once you've looked at the notch and the phone is unlocked, you can simply swipe up to open the phone to the home screen. If you have any notifications on the screen, you won't be able to read the details by default until you unlock it with Face ID. Then the details of the notifications appear. This will keep your notifications safe from prying eyes. I think this is a great feature. So as most people now know, since the home button is gone on the iPhone X, if you want to close an app, you just swipe up using the bar at the bottom of the screen, referred to as the home indicator, from what I understand. There are a couple of ways to switch between apps with the iPhone X. First, you can use the app switcher by simply swiping the home indicator up and holding for a moment. This will make the app switcher appear where you will be able to swipe left through all of the app cards that have been or are currently running. When in the app switcher, if you'd like to force close an app, they've added an extra step though. Now you need to press and hold the app's card for a moment and wait for the little red circle button to appear in the upper left hand corner. Then you can either press the red circle button or swipe up as before to force close the app. Once the red corner buttons have been invoked, you can close as many apps as you like at once by swiping up just like other iPhones. They've also added a cool new way to switch between apps using the home indicator. You can swipe either left or right on the home indicator to swipe through the apps one at a time from the home screen. This feature is really handy. The next major gesture that's kind of a big change is a new way to access the control center. To access control center on the iPhone X, you swipe down from the upper right hand corner. This is a big change and will take some time to get used to, but I guess they had to change control center to a different swipe so it wouldn't interfere with the new home indicator gestures. Now while we're talking about the control center, they've added the full status bar to control center on the iPhone X. Because of the notch, they've abbreviated what the status bar shows regularly by splitting up the information and showing what they can in the screen horns, the extra part of the screen on either side of the notch, on the left and right. Everybody will have their own take on this, but for the most part you can see all of the important stuff you need to know all of the time still. But the details that were previously shown, such as the Bluetooth status or the alarm indicator, are still available, they're just a part of Control Center now, so at least those details aren't gone, they've just been moved. The iPhone X also gets a new exclusive ringtone called Reflection. It's the new default ringtone on iPhone X. I think it sounds pretty cool. If you'd like to get the ringtone but don't have the iPhone X, I made a video showing you how to get it on your current iPhone, called Get the New iPhone X Ringtone Reflection on your current iPhone. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to check that out. Other iPhone X gesture controls to be aware of that aren't a huge change, but still a little different, are Notification Center and the App Search screen. For Notification Center, you just swipe down from the upper left, and the search function is still similar. You just swipe down from the middle below the notch. One tip or trick depending on your point of view, I'd really recommend, especially if you're the type of person who likes to use the iPhone single-handed sometimes, would be to activate reachability. I find this super handy sometimes, since the screen is much longer than that of the regular 4.7 inch screen I'm used to. To activate reachability, go to Settings, then go to General, then Accessibility, and scroll down to Reachability and swipe it on. Now if you're using the iPhone X single-handed, you can swipe down on the home indicator and that will invoke reachability and bring the screen down enough for you to reach the top. I use this a lot for accessing control center when I use my iPhone X with one hand. Another tip I like to talk about is a true tone screen feature. It's kind of a double edged sword. For those that aren't sure what it is, it works a lot like the white balance compensating system found in the iPhone's camera flash, allowing the iPhone X screen to determine just the right percentage intensity, and temperature of white light you need. The idea behind the whole concept is that whites tend to look different under different light, but with True Tone enabled, the iPhone X can shift how the display looks no matter the lighting. The True Tone feature should make reading text comfortable on the eyes, while the dynamically adjusted brightness, when paired with the low reflectance display, should equal more readability in direct sunlight. However, if you're like me and can't stand to see inaccurate colors, you can turn this off. 
The easiest way is through Control Center. Just swipe down from the upper right hand corner and 3D touch the brightness control, and the True Tone toggle will be available for you to turn on and off. It's one of those things that comes down to personal preference, so you can try it both ways to see which you prefer. It's a neat idea, but seeing inaccurate colors drives me nuts, so I turn it off. But I also do the same thing with Night Shift as well. The last new change on the iPhone X I'd like to talk about for a moment are the new buttons on the lock screen for the flashlight and camera. They're 3D touch buttons, and the implementation is really cool. I really like how they work. I just wish they were user programmable. I love it for the flashlight, as that's something I use often, but I feel the one for the camera is kind of a waste, as you can just swipe left to get the camera. Here's hoping they let you customize those buttons in a future iOS update. Well everybody, that was my iPhone 10 gestures, tips, and tricks video. Are there any iPhone 10 gestures, tips, or tricks I missed you think I should have mentioned? If so, let me know in the comments below. If there's enough, I can do a follow-up video. If you enjoyed this video, or found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos, every week. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.